over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, and not a single female who wants to engage in sexual congress with me. Dr. Huberman, you're cheating on eight women at the same time. How do you do it? I'm not cheating, Dr. Tyson. I'm engaged in several simultaneous, mutually consenting partnerships. If you're interested in SSMCPs, my first piece of advice would be to regulate yourself. There are plenty of potentially willing mates surrounding you right now, but your stress hormones are repelling them. I suspect you haven't been doing your cold plunges. You have no evidence to support that. What about your recent video debunking the scientific accuracy of Disney's Ratatouille? Not exactly the behavior of someone operating at peak performance. I think you're just mad I didn't cite any of your rat studies in my analysis of the film. I don't deny that I would have appreciated it. I've been doing some pretty groundbreaking work in that area. You know, you remind me a little bit of a rat. I'm reserving my judgment until I hear the rest of your claim. I don't mean to be insulting. Mm. We share 95% mm. of our genes with rats. That's why they're such useful subjects of study. Through them, we can examine the pure mammalian drives that control our limbic systems. I'd like to examine that mammalian's limbic drives. Insolent wench. Exactly what I mean, my friend. You are particularly rat-like tonight. You are blinkered, twitchy and hungry, fiendishly clawing for your next reward. Good sir, you have insulted me, and I demand satisfaction. With all due respect, Dr. Tyson, I'm in much better shape than you, so I don't think a physical altercation would end well. An intriguing hypothesis. I suppose we'll have to test it empirically. <laughs> Dr. Tyson, I must question the efficacy of this experimental design. Nonsense, my esteemed colleague. This is an oldie but a goodie, and the mathematics are quite sound. However, I need your help to achieve the intended result. Do tell. Collaboration is the bedrock of inquiry. In order for me to apply optimal pressure, I need you to press your buttocks against my buttocks. Preposterous. I could just as well push your lower back with my hands. False. If you would simply take a moment to analyze the topological vector space at hand, you'd see that the mutual absorption of our gluteal cushions will counteract the force of your body weight in the precise balance that will render the maximum satisfaction to my cylinder of engorgement. Unless you don't think you can sustain a squat for sufficiently long. Are you questioning my isometric resilience? I've seen no evidence of its existence and cannot simply take it on faith. Uh, harder. Harder. Dr. Tyson, I hate to interrupt, but there's a curious astronomical phenomenon that might be of interest to you. Silence! <laughs> Come join us. Ew, gross, not you. Dr. Tyson, come on now. A little decorum, please. One hundred billion stars in the Milky Way. Two hundred billion galaxies in the universe. Fathomless and limitless, the cosmos yawns its borderless mystery into voids unknown. Meanwhile, the human mind, yoked to its animal limitations, struggles to conceive of its place in the firmament. Yet the picture is not as hopeless as it may seem. Isn't it a wondrous gift that the mind may conceive of anything at all? That the long dead stars shine their faraway light upon us, eons after they have perished. For what purpose have we been allowed to bask in their glow? We are star matter, gazing at star matter. Through us, the light refracts on itself and warms in its own blaze. Through us, being 
and beholding merge into an indissoluble unity. 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. They shine for you and me. Oh, <laughs> oh,